A classic algorithmic question is how to find a path from A to B on a map, like this medieval map of Cambridge. The natural way to solve this sort of question is to turn it into a question about paths on a graph. What we'll look at in this video is an algorithm called breadth-first search, which is for finding a shortest path between two vertices, meaning the smallest possible number of edges. The basic idea is very simple. Suppose we've got a graph like this one, and we want to find the shortest path from A to some other vertex. I'm going to redraw the graph to put A on the top. All the vertices I can reach directly from A, I'll put one layer down underneath it, and I'll draw in the edges from A. I'll say that A is at distance zero from A, and its neighbors are distance one. Next, I'll look at these two new vertices, B and D, and I'll scan through all their edges. Some edges can bring me to new vertices, E and C, and other edges take me back to parts of the graph I've already seen. Let's label the new vertices as being at distance two from A. Next, look at all the edges out of these two new vertices, E and C, and see if they take us anywhere new. They don't, it's just a way back to A, so the algorithm stops there. The idea of breadth first search is very simple. It's just visit A, then all vertices distance one from A, then all vertices distance two, and so on. You can see why it's called breadth first search because it explores the entire breadth of this graph before it goes deeper. Let's think in a bit more detail about how to turn this into actual code. Let's start by setting out a list to hold vertices and we'll start by sticking A into the list. We'll investigate A and look at its neighbours. It has two neighbours, B and D, so let's add them to the list. I've drawn them on the right-hand side. Next, move our attention to the next vertex in the list, B, and let's look at its neighbours. There are E and C, which we haven't seen before, so we'll stick them on the right-hand side. And there's another neighbour, D, which we've already come across before, so we don't need to do anything concerning D. We can keep track of which vertices we've come across before by storing a boolean value at each vertex, indicating have I seen this vertex already. Next, move our attention on to D. It has two neighbours, A and C, but we've seen them both already, so we don't need to do anything, and likewise at E and at C. Now, what's really lovely about this algorithm is that it's visited vertices in order of distance from A but we didn't have to compute any distances. The algorithm just does it implicitly. Okay, let's turn this into code. Hit pause, have a quick read through, and then I'll draw your attention to the interesting bits. First, this line here, where we declare a queue. A queue stores a list of items it lets us add them on one side and take them out on the other, so it's exactly what we need to store the list of vertices. And now these lines, which deal with marking vertices as I've already seen this. We initialize all vertices as unseen, and whenever we push something into the queue we mark it as seen, and so when we come across a neighbour that's got seen equals true, we don't know we don't need to bother pushing it into the queue, either it's in there at the moment, or it was in there earlier and it's since been popped from the queue. Great. Now, this code doesn't actually do what we set out to do at the beginning of the video, namely find shortest paths, but we're very nearly there. Have another look at this list of vertices that the algorithm visits and look at the useful edges that we've drawn out on top. Each of these vertices takes us one hop further away from the start vertex. So if I want to find the shortest path from A to C, for example, it's easy. I just start at C and I follow the edges backwards. So that gives us our algorithm for computing shortest paths. It's just the same code as before, plus some extra bookkeeping to keep track of the useful edges. We'll store these useful edges as pointers backwards. So for example, C will have a pointer back to B and B will have a pointer back to A. This makes it easy to follow the path backwards. Finally, we ought to analyze the running time for our algorithm. Let's go back to the simple version just to make things simpler. Now, 
Instead of trying to analyze the running time directly, it's smarter to say to ourselves, hey, I've seen this before. Here's the code for stack-based depth-first search. Now, pause the video and play a quick game of Spot the Difference. You should have picked up just these two lines that are different. Breadth-first search uses a queue and picks the next vertex by popping from the left. Depth-first search uses a stack and pops from the right. That's interesting. It means these two algorithms are basically the same thing, just different preferences. And it also means that all our complexity analysis goes through unchanged. OK, so that's breadth-first search. But before we finish, I just want to show another view of it, which will help us understand the next algorithm in our course, Dijkstra's algorithm. Here's a run through of breadth first search. I'm coloring all the vertices in our queue that we're waiting to explore, I'm coloring them red, and I'm changing the color to blue after we visit them. You can see there's a sort of frontier of vertices that's steadily growing. Each iteration, we pick a vertex and we grow the frontier a little bit around it. Remember this idea of the frontier of vertices waiting to be explored and we'll be all set for the next video.